Infinite Earth is a social and environmental enterprise. Um, our mission is to try and create a new asset class around forestry. Ultimately, that was the goal of the UN and the Kyoto Accords, was to try and assign value to environmental services. Infinite Earth is a, an environmental technology company focused on solving many environmental problems using the free market to finance it. We get paid through developing and certifying carbon credits that we are selling. Carbon credits is just the underlying currency that we use to pay for our conservation efforts. The way we measure carbon in a forest, there's a thing called allometric equations, and these essentially measure the biomass of any living organism. For example, you'd measure the diameter and the height and the crown of the tree, and knowing the species of the tree and therefore the density of that tree, you can measure the amount of carbon because all biomass is carbon-based. A tree's wood is generally roughly 50% carbon by molecular weight. And once you get the, the amount of carbon in the tree, from there it's just a really easy conversion over to carbon dioxide, which is generally the tradable commodity, if you will. One of our projects from Baraya is a forest in Borneo, which we're using uh, the revenues from carbon credits to finance the uh, protection of the area, as well as developing the communities nearby. We had a complex forest that involved hundreds of species of trees, and it's a large forest. So the first thing that's done is you break it down into land classification areas, and there, you know, there are different types of, of, of forests, and they all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And so you have to identify those different classes of forest, and within each of those, we have test plots, and there are hundreds of them, and they were randomly chosen by computer-generated uh, waypoints and regardless of how accessible they are, we have to get into those waypoints, and from there, we measure out uh, 100 meter by 100 meter plots. And within each of those, we measured literally every single tree and every single vine using these allometric equations to calculate the biomass. It is an incredibly rigorous process that took us two years to complete, spending days and weeks in remote areas of, of swamps that sometimes took two and three days to hike to. And then the project had to be approved against the methodology, which then goes through an annual audit to make sure that we are meeting those standards. We developed the world's first accounting methodology for doing so, which was independently verified twice by a, a list of UN sanctioned auditors. Tanjung Puting National Park contains the largest wild orangutan population in existence. And the fact that Rimbaraya was able to add additional forest to it uh, is incredible. Rimbaraya Concession, which is just outside the National Park, held the most magnificent looking forest. Without the sale of those carbon credits, that forest would literally not exist today. And that forest is absolutely magnificent habitat. Dr. Galdakos's work in the Orangutan Foundation is woven into the fabric of the project. This project was initiated by Dr. Galdakos needing land to release these orphaned orangutan. And uh, fortunately, came in contact with Todd and said that this is a piece of land that we need to release orangutan. And so we built the project with that purpose, not only saving the environment, but providing a habitat for the orangutans. The carbon credit plan has been extremely good, extremely fortunate for the forest. Most forests are now being converted to palm oil plantations, and particularly peat swamp forests. So the Rimbaraya being here, that forest would have been destroyed, you know, demolished, burned, so that palm oil could come in. I'm standing here in a mature oil palm plantation, and from down here it may look like a pristine environment. And even from Google Earth, you might mistake it for a forest. But this is anything but a forest. This, in fact, is a biological desert. Other than these oil palms, a lot of rats and a lot of cobras, nothing else really grows here. It's easy to point fingers and criminalize the palm oil companies, but we have to remember that as consumers, we're responsible for these trees, even though they may be half a world away from where we live. And that's because so many of the products that we consume contain palm oil. And that's because of this amazing little nut. The oil that it produces is tasteless, odorless, and colorless, which makes it the perfect oil for using in everything from cosmetics to foods to paints. It's also the most productive oil seed in the world, producing far more tons per hectare than any other oil seed, which means this isn't going away. 
And that's why we have to change the dialogue between producers and manufacturers and manufacturers and consumers so that together we can find new solutions that don't pit development against conservation. In Pankalan Boon, this is our field office. The vast majority of the economy here is driven directly or indirectly by palm dollars. You can't march into these places and say, oh, the devastating deforestation that is occurring is a bad thing and, and we need to stop it. It's not that simple. A lot of people's lives depend on the revenues generated by palm oil. And it's a multi-billion dollar industry. The company that was the underlying agent of deforestation in our area that was competing for the concession area is a billion dollar company by itself. Palm oil is not going away. If we're asking governments to not grant concessions that convert forests to palm oil concessions, then we have to provide an economically viable alternative. It can't just be a moral alternative. Our main focus of the community initiatives is to provide alternative livelihood. Foreign auditors came in to Indonesia to verify whether we did what we said we would do. And within a day, we were in the jungle, neck deep into swamp. We're uh, looking at this project of uh for compliance with two different standards. One is uh, VCS, the Voluntary Carbon Standard, and the other is uh, CCBA, Climate, Community, and Biodiversity. The purpose here is for us to conduct a verification of the project. Verification is done at regular intervals by uh, an outside independent third party organization. These standards are incredibly stringent and rigorous. I've been through audits now three times. And I can tell you for sure, uh, there is almost zero chance a project can get through those uh, standards and, and not uh, deliver the benefits they're expected to deliver. So we will go about the process of looking at the project area. We will look at how the project calculated those carbon credits. And in many cases, we will go back in and reproduce their samples, if you will. In some cases, it's physical measurement plots in a forest setting to make sure that what was calculated and assessed what was actually true on the ground. They're recording measurements and verifying measurements that we would have turned in. They also are meeting with the communities, making sure that the communities support the project and receiving benefits. They have reported certain aspects of their project that uh, are going to be benefiting for the community and we're here to assess whether or not that's true. So literally, we go to several communities and we talk to individuals. When the carbon credit revenues come in, we then allocate them to various programs, some of them environmental, some of them community related. Now, the cook stoves is a great example where we're able to hand out these environmentally sensitive cook stoves. They use less wood, less smoke is released in the air. It's better for their health, better for the environment. This is just one of the first of, um, of our community-based nurseries where uh, we're, we're paying local communities to, to grow seedlings of native species um, and then um, those will be distributed throughout the, the communities that depend on the forest of Rimbaraya to replant areas that are degraded. Clean water is incredibly important in Rimbaraya. They live on a river. The river is not exactly clean, but they use that river for uh, drinking water, washing, many, many things. And, and they do get sick occasionally. Through the revenues we receive, we purchase these uh, filters, very simple clean water filters. And these filters enable them to take the river water, put it in the filter, and actually drink the water after it's filtered and, and realize the benefits, especially to their health. Many of these communities do appear to um, be employed by the oil palm companies, which is providing them with an income. But they've also expressed the desire to retain the natural environment for their future generations. And so I think that's really what this project is, is has, appears to have already been successful with. Rimbarai has achieved uh, several verifications and certifications. Number one, we were validated by CCB triple gold, which is the highest you can get, which means gold in community, climate, and biodiversity. Uh, we were verified and validated for VCS, and they are, they are the standard that um, issues the carbon credits. It's important to initiate projects like this because as human beings we have an obligation to be good stewards or take care of the earth. There is only one earth um, and as we know we're increasing in population. We have to take this seriously. If we don't take this seriously uh, the whole world will be uh, devoid of nature and deforested and just used up. 
Everything we do at Infinite Earth is for this generation and this generation. We've got to come up with better economic models that don't borrow from their futures to subsidize our consumption today.